Hello and welcome to Treasure Vessels, our podcast where we want to discuss your songs in the light of the living word of God. Hey, good morning, good morning everybody. It's a beautiful Saturday and it's a day full of promise and a day full of love, which we're going to talk about here really soon. There's the beautiful smile of Manasseh Nand I see over there in India. Hey, Manasseh, it's 10.22 a.m. here in Kentucky. What time is it there? The clock says it's 8 p.m. here. It's almost night, and uh, the day has been good with God's grace. So uh, now we'd like to welcome one great uh, poet from Los Angeles uh, with a very beautiful smile. Hi, Diana. <laughs> welcome to Treasure Vessels. Thank you. Good morning, Manasa and Carolyn and Jonathan. Thank you for having me. And it's about uh, 7.23 here in Los Angeles time, so mm -hmm. in the morning. So finally, somebody got up earlier than me. <laughs> yeah, on a Saturday. I'm, I'm always the early riser. Sometimes I've gotten up at 4 to talk to people oh, in wow. Australia and things. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. worth it. It's definitely yeah. worth it. So, um, yeah, I, I totally appreciate you getting up early to look like you're awake and everything and ready to go at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, my pleasure. So, Thank you again. Diana, on uh, SoundCloud, um, people know you by your name, Diana Harmon Gar Garnand. Yes. Did I say that right? You did, yes. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. And... Um, your voice is heard all over the place on SoundCloud through a lot of, on a lot of different uh, music tracks that I have listened to myself by a lot of different artists. And you are known for um, speaking poems that you wrote, poems that um, other people have written, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of great things. Uh, one I listened to recently was the last words of someone who was passing away mm -hmm. and you know I just it's a very interesting thing that you do so but before we got, get into that can you tell us a little bit about where you're living um, well I live in uh, a city called Simi Valley it's outside of Los Angeles and i um, been here for 13 14 years now and I like the area a lot. It's a little, it's out of Los Angeles. It's still very much a city, but it feels a little more country to me. And um, I'm a native from Southern California here, born and raised in Los Angeles. So I've traveled a little bit over the years, but I've mostly been based here. And um, I've been trying to get out of California and relocate. It feels like most of my life, but I'm still here, so I guess it's all good. Well, oh, there's plenty of houses for sale around here in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would love to come to Kentucky. <laughs> hey, so where where you're at, is there there a lot of desert around there, mountains or what? Both. Um, this region of California is pretty much everything. Uh, we are basically in a in a valley. It is desert, um, but we have we're surrounded by mountains. The ocean, the coast, is just just a few miles away. Um, so we really have the best of everything in our area. You can drive half an hour, an hour in any direction and get to, uh, to the mountains, further out into the desert, you know, to the ocean. And um, so it's, we're, we're really very fortunate here. And the weather's yeah. usually great year round. So. Yeah, I actually was there in that area when I was uh, a child probably about um, 12 I spent a summer there with my grandmother she worked at a um, at a restaurant that was right off of one of the main highways and it was really famous for putting this barbecue sauce on their hamburgers and they also served like peanut butter milkshakes wow. and, uh, Do you remember the name of it no I don't but I mean the owner his the sauce on the hamburgers was really famous Oh. And later, several years, my, my grandmother told me the secret what was in the sauce, but she swore me to secrecy, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, it was not, you know, I mean, like, it seems like I remember Bob Hope living somewhere not too far from there. Where was he from? Yeah. 
Um, I think out in the desert area, but there yeah. are a lot of celebrities in this area. Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. Probably we're talking about California. Yeah. Okay, well, all right. Well, that's enough of that little chit-chat, I guess. <laughs> we, uh, um, well, I'm pretty interested about you and your interest in poetry and, uh, you know, doing the spoken art over music. How did all this come about for you in your life? Um, you know, I've written poetry off and on for years since I was, um, really since I was a child, but, um, it was very sporadic. It was, wasn't anything very prolific. Um, but once I sat down and finally took the time to write, there was usually something behind that that was really moving me and motivating me. So, um, I had several things just kind of tucked away in my, my books over the years. <clears throat> and then about, I think, gosh, almost two years ago. Yeah, almost two years ago now. Um, I, I met um, Darren, Darren Stark, Darren Stark Jr. And he's a musician also. And he had an, he was actually the one that encouraged me to start rec recording my poetry, and uh, it was nothing, nothing I'd even thought about doing before. And um, he, I actually always attribute him for getting me involved in SoundCloud. He, he post, he started getting into SoundCloud, posting some of his music there, and um, and it encouraged me to record something. And Rumi. Uh, who I always attribute to a um, big part of my spiritual awakening process is Rumi poetry. And um, so I recorded one of his pieces called The Intellectual and sent it to Darren and he put music to it. And it was, I heard it and I just was really blown away by the combination mm -hmm. of music and poetry. And it really brought the piece to life. And so we did a few pieces initially, and I started getting into SoundCloud that way. I initially would just post my readings of, it started out as all roomy poetry. I was mm -hmm. not that confident about my own work <laughs> at the time. And so, uh, so some of the other people that I started meeting on SoundCloud, some of the other wonderful musicians, would started downloading my vocal tracks and I didn't even know this was happening <laughs> <laughs> and, and would post it and, you know, send me a private link or whatever and say, you know, I hope you don't mind. I, I just, you know, your, your vocal track to some music. What do you think? If you don't like it, let me know. Everybody was so, you know, it was very gracious. And, uh, uh -huh. and I was, again, just blown away at the, um, the creativity and the heart, you know, really the heart of people all over the world. <clears throat> Germany, working with wonderful musicians in Germany and Russia and here in the United States that I feel would, you know, I would have never gotten to meet otherwise. And I just mm -hmm. feel like SoundCloud is another social media site that has really brought people together. So, um, so that's kind of how it got started for me. And as I got more confident in my ability, I started posting some of my own poetry. And I was writing new stuff too and putting that out there. So, um, so Darren and I did several pieces together and uh, as well as other musicians. So, and now actually, I'm sorry to say, it's been almost a year since I've been involved in SoundCloud and I really, really miss it. But, Life just sort of, um, about a year ago, exactly this time, uh, completely turned around for me. And so I don't have the time that I used to, but I, um, I really miss it and want to get back into it very soon. So. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's really good. And that's uh, how we, the three of us met was through SoundCloud. Yes. And uh, so let's see. First, I, I came across Jonathan's page and I read, I was listening to his music. I thought, wow, this is a really, really good. 
and I was reading his bio, you know, and he, and he, and I saw how young he was, you know, at the time, I, I think he was under 20. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I just kept listening to all of his music. And I was, by the time I got done, I was like, I would adopt you as my son. Your parents must be so proud of you. And next thing you know, we started talking to each other. And um, and then it wasn't too much longer after that, Manasseh was looking for, you know, a Christian uh, vocalist for his music. And so mm -hmm. I started doing music with him too. So I've, I've done music with both these guys and we still do, even though we're, you know, kind of in a little bit of a break phase right now ourselves too. Um, and then uh, it was a, just over a year ago that the Lord gave us this, um, the idea for, you know, interviewing the people on SoundCloud. And we also interview some people from another site called Compose. But uh, most of the people are on SoundCloud. And uh, so it's just really great to get to know people around the world and here in the United States, too. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. But life does come at us, and, um, you know, we go through different phases. Uh, right now, it's, it's a little difficult for me to get on SoundCloud, so I completely understand that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, anyway, um, Diana, let's um, go ahead and listen to the first uh, clip of some of your poetry readings that you sent us to your collaborator's music. Yeah. Okay. We dance as one in this palace of love where there are no walls, no floors, no ceilings. After all, how can this love be contained? You are all I see, there is no other. We are connected through everything, in everything, by everything. We are all that is. You are this very breath. You are the beating of my heart. You are this smile and the reason for it. You are all I see. There is no other. Jesus. Whales are here to assist us in self-healing, to see and move through our fears, to help us remember where we came from and what we truly are. all so nice and so much about love and Manasseh mm -hmm. picked out some great parts he really did a nice job putting that together I think thank you yes thank you Manasseh <laughs> do you want to say anything about the people who uh, put that uh, made the music and put those did they they put your vocals on there for you um yes the first two pieces were um, poems that I wrote and um I asked specifically, um, which is not always the case uh, in, in the past, but the first two pieces, Palace of Love and You Are All I See, were um, written specifically for my, well, now my fiance, Mateo. Um, mm -hmm. And those messages actually came to me during meditations initially. And so they are very special to me uh, for a number of reasons because of that. But then I, I turn them into poems um, for him and about him. And You Are All I See also 
is very specific. Um, that actually came through when I was doing a Reiki session on one of my friends, and that came through as um, divine guidance, a, a message, a very specific message. And I was um, very connected with, with God, with my divine during that process. And so it's very um, specific and relative also to my connection with, with my divine you know, and everything. You are all I see. And um, the musicians that I asked to write or to put music to that um, were based on working with them in the past, Michael Clay and uh, Stefan uh, from Germany, whose last name is escaping me at the moment. But um, I wanted to give those as gifts to Matteo. During our first meeting, uh, he lives in Toronto, and so we met, uh, we met about a year ago on Facebook. <laughs> mm. And so when we met in person for the first time last winter, I had um, these, these poems with music that I wanted him to hear. So he was mm. pretty blown away, and he's very, very grateful also to, um, to the mus musicians that have, that have done that for us. Um, the third one that was played actually it's from a, a SoundCloud, SoundCloud friend that lives right here where I live in Simi Valley and it's really amazing again the connections and how small the world really is but he, uh, Don Cook, initially heard one of my recordings on a common friend's site who lives in Greece, Costas, <laughs> and he said I've got to find out who that is, you know, who's that voice? <laughs> and so we started talking, and it turns out, you know, we actually live right here in the same town. And we met for coffee one day, and a uh, great guy, a very nice guy. And he said he was um, about to work on a project for Oceans. It's this compilation CD that was put together to raise awareness and to raise money for whales and dolphins and ocean life. And so... <clears throat> I wrote that piece, I put together uh, my bit and put it to his amazing music. And so that's actually available um, on Bandcamp, Bandcamp as a download. To, nice. To money. So I'm very proud of that one in particular too. So um, anyhow, just, just again, great musicians, very artistic uh, people that I've, that I've been so fortunate to, uh, to work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's wonderful it's really wonderful and um yeah i mean it's like an it's like a new world you didn't know existed before you know um, not at all not at all and people and, and i really love it. i just i love that time of sitting with you know with the piece with the recording and uh, the, the pieces that i haven't written that i select or that i'm drawn to you know, I always go back to, to love, or some sort of love or connection with, um, you know, with God, with all of those, and with the, with the Rumi pieces, you know, you can read his, his work and wonder if he's writing about God or is he writing about his lover. <laughs> mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of crossover there. And, yeah, um, uh-huh. I appreciate that. I do that sometimes, too, in my writing. Um, yeah. So today, Diana, we ask you to come on, and we're going to talk about your feature tune, which is The Road to You is Through Me. is mm -hmm. really, really nice uh, thing to read and meditate on, you know, um, to prepare for this talk with you. And um, do you mm -hmm. want to read it to us, or would you like me to read it? Um, yeah, if you'd like to read it, actually, that would be great. Okay, I'll read it then. I have searched for you this entire life, endlessly looking for you in countless eyes, listening intently for your secret language and all that is said and unsaid, yearning to feel your touch, seeking some sign, some confirmation from you. Why is the search so long, the road to you so lonely? 
What have I done to deserve this? What do I need to do to find you, to see you? Where do I look next? So afraid to stop seeking. Time is running out. Unwilling to settle for less than you. I know you're right there, just out of reach. And right here, here. Completely within my grasp. The road to you is through me. So I continue on. It's really <laughs> good. Really good, Diana. Thank you. So what do you want to say about this? And we're going to take it apart a little bit, talk a little bit here and there. Uh, well, I wrote that piece, <clears throat> I guess, about a year and a, almost a year and a half ago now. And um, I was going through a lot beginning beginning about four years ago when I got laid off of my job. That was a direct result of the economic um, downfall that we you know that we've been in for quite a while. I um, I was really searching. I mean, I feel like I've been searching my whole life for the connection with God. And although growing up, um, I never would have put it into those words, but I felt it. I felt that's what I was looking for. That's what I was missing. That's what I came into this life to find. And, um, but growing up, I was very much uh, you know, anti-religion and um, just didn't grow up with a, a strong, you know, religious background at all. And um, anyhow, uh, but always going through life and knowing that that something was missing for me, you know, trying to find out what my real mission here in life was, that connection with God. I always felt something was missing. So um, four years ago, I believe that that was when this all mainly started for me um, in a big way. And so I was kicked off of the hamster wheel, <laughs> as, as many of us know it. And, um, Soul searching, a lot of spiritual growth, a lot of deep meditation over those few years, and um, really looking for what work I was meant to do here in life. And I knew it was more than just making a paycheck and you know buying things and paying off debt. And um, and then also searching for I, I had gone through a divorce during that period, and so really life for me as I knew it fell apart, just completely crumbled. But I see now that that had to happen in order to get to where I'm at. And so when that poem came about, um, I was really at a low point in my life, I felt. My connection at the time with, with God or my divine had really um, developed and been stronger than it ever was. But at the same time, I really was... Um, <laughs> I don't know, just really grasping at straws. I, I wasn't able to find work. Um, I was still really searching for, like, the one person, you know, the lover, the one that I'm that I meant to be with. And it occurred to me that that person I was seeking was really um, about the connection with God that I was seeking. And also, that person I was seeking was me. So it occurred to me that we are all really one and the same. That's the way I saw it. That, you know, you're not going to find that person outside of yourself. You know, that, that lover, that one that's going to take away all your problems or anything like that. Or, you know, fall in love and everything's going to be great. You know, it just came, it came to me that it's not about seeking that outside of yourself. It's really about that connection with, with God or whatever you call that, whatever that is for you. And um, so once that really clicked for me on a very deep level, I realized that the road to you is through me. So it was about the connection with God and really finding that here within me. And also that was for the one, the lover I was looking for, you know, always like the, the big one. <laughs> and um, 
So, so right around, um, it was summertime two years ago. No, I'm sorry, just a year ago. I was at that really low point, uh, which I know now was the dark night of the soul that I've always heard about. I thought I had probably been through at some point in my life with the different low points and stuff that I've been through, but no, this was very different. This was very, very different. And um, when I, I realized that's where I was at and that's what was happening to me, I, I remember being in meditation and getting really happy for a moment because I thought, oh my gosh. If this is where I'm at, it means that the dawn is just around the corner. You know, that I'm close. And sure enough, uh, September a year ago was when, when life really turned around for me. So I met Mateo. I got my my job. <laughs> and um, It, it was a real process of, of getting there, but it was very deep soul searching. And so that's that's how that poem came about. It's really about um, the road to you, the road to God, and the road to the lover, the one, uh, as well as the road to me. You know, it's it's all really we're all one. It's all one and the same. So. Um, yeah, that's how that poem came about. <laughs> that's really that's really something. Um, I mean, you just you painted a picture of you know all of this that you went through, and um, yeah, you know, it's like I at, when I was first reading your words, I, you know, I see a lot of myself in some of the things that you've said here, and. Um, you know, just going up off the top, it says, you know, I've searched for you this entire life and endlessly looking in countless eyes and listening intently for your secret language. You know, um, that's that's been pretty much how I've been as well. And I think that anybody, I think we're, I, I have a belief that we're all looking, you know, for God or, you know, for that thing. We're, we're, yeah, we're looking for where we belong, uh, who we are, yeah. why we're here, you know, our our importance, our, you know, the reason, reason for our, yeah, and so it's like, but it, so many people, if you just, if you try to talk to them about it, a lot of people, you know, they're too busy doing something else that they think they're going to find fulfillment in, and, yeah. um, it's it takes something like losing your job or an illness or something mm -hmm. that's going to make you stop exactly. or when you you have to sit down and be quiet and then your thoughts all come together and uh yeah i've yeah. had to stop Keep before working. huh okay, all the distractions you know mm -hmm. yeah i know jonathan's probably smiling manasseh's probably thinking yeah, look how much Carolyn's doing right now. She needs to stop for a while. Right. <laughs> I really have a way. Okay. But anyway, so um, I I feel that, you know, even in my own busyness, you know, you feel mm -hmm. like your soul is yearning for God. There's a scripture in the Psalms that says, um, you know, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. And so, you know, in the desert, these little deers, they would hide under, you know, like a shady bush or something in the middle of the day. And they would not come out to drink till at night because it was dangerous for them, maybe for the heat and for predators. And so they would sit yeah. there and pant and pant and pant all day in their, in their mm -hmm. thirst until they could go and drink the water. And that's how we are, you know, if we are just going and going and going and we don't stop, you know, our, our soul is, is panting, going, oh, God, I, I want to, you know, I, I need to drink your water. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, very good. There's that's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot in your words here, like yearning to feel your touch. That reminds me of uh, Psalm 23, you know, uh, talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so doing a study on Psalm 23, it talks about the relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. And, and just like in any group of people, there are different relationships with animals and the, you know, their owner or the, the sheep and the shepherd. So each, mm -hmm. each different sheep has its own personality and some might be skittish and, you know, don't want them to come near, but the good shepherd, he checks his sheep every day. He feels their bodies. He checks them to make sure they're healthy. Mm -hmm. And there are some sheep that are very affectionate to him and they will go up to him every day to be touched by him. And so, in a, you know, that's why, you know, one of the great things about using the shepherd and the sheep to look at our relationship with God, I mean, some of us are always trying to jump over the fence and, you know, go where we think the grass is greener, and he's always chasing back after us to bring us back, and then there are those who want to stick close by and say, you know, I want to touch you today, make sure everything's okay. And so... We don't even realize how much we're yearning for his touch, you know, yeah. sometimes. What I see here is like, you know, uh, as you both are talking about, like everyone is uh, looking for God. So, yeah, it doesn't matter uh, religious or non-religious person. Yeah. Uh, like people say, you know, they're looking for peace at the moment. Uh, if we hear the news about Syria and all. So, or, or, you know, if people are uh, saying like uh, they're looking for love. So I say like this, like, you know, those are different names of God, you know. Yeah. Peace comes from God, love is God, you know? and, you know, even happiness, healing, whatever, they are different names. It all comes to that divine we know as God, the creator, the creator of everything, you know, the source of everything. So that's what I see, like, you know, that's what everyone at the moment is seeking for something, like happiness or peace or love, you know. Because everyone missed that part, and that is uh, because they themselves have gone far from God, because they're focusing on themselves more than focusing on God. Uh, you know, focusing on what is real or accepting the truth, which yeah. will bring the, uh, you know, happiness. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry well, to yeah. Change. changing others, you know, I think, well, if if, I, if there's peace in the world, if everybody else would learn to get along, then I'll be happy. But, you know, not many people want to really look inside at their own beliefs and their own judgments of others and see if yeah. they're really willing to make that peace themselves. You know, so it always goes back to what we're feeling inside, to the conflict we're having inside. Yeah. You know, that we are just parts of the whole, the collective. Yeah, I have a very good scripture for that, uh, which is from uh, James, uh, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, which says, What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Isn't, isn't it the whole army of evil desires at war within you? Mm, yeah. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous for what others have and you can't possess it. So you fight and try to take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. So that's what I see, like, you know, uh, as you were saying. You know, like, um, um, it is the fight within it, between the good and evil. Yes. So if we, you know, uh, try to take a solution for the things going around us, it will not solve the main root cause till the time we, you know, uh, look inside ourselves and try to, you know, stop that fight going on. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> that that fight of good and evil is really what I attribute to the fight between, or the conflict between love and fear. You know, really knowing yeah. and feeling that love here versus the fear that our mind continually uh, loops, you know, that those fear messages which spin out into judgment or hatred or jealousy or, 
you know, lack or e it's really all ego. So mm -hmm. when we learn to just really tune in here and, and speak and, and act from the heart, from love, it's a completely different response. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really where I'm not there all the time, you know, because the, <laughs> the mind chat does still creep in, you know, and, and yeah. I still have my, my moments of fear and, you know, and, and jealousy and things like that, you know, but, but for the most part, it's, um, it's not a battle of me and other people. It's just within, and I see that now, you know, um, so. Uh, I think the world is really waking up to this and the world is this is part of the awakening that we're going through right now and the world thankfully is coming together because of our connections uh, mainly through the internet that people are seeing um, the beauty and cultures everywhere you know it's they're, they're waking up to the truth that really we all want the same thing we all want that love uh, just, just wanted to add one more scripture to what you were saying about the awakening. Um, you know, like the world is finally getting uh, to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And I see the purpose behind this, or, uh, you know, the purpose of God. And uh, this scripture tells the same. It is from Acts 17, 27. And uh, it follows like this. It says, his purpose in all of this was that the nations should seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him though he is not far from any one of us mm -hmm. for in him we live and move and exist as one of your own poets says we are his offspring mm -hmm. and since this is true we shouldn't be think we should not think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone so, you know, like, let it be any religion, any nation. It is God's will and it is going as per God's purpose. And, you know, truth cannot be hidden. And one day it will uh, reveal itself to everyone. Yeah. And that's where it's all leading. That's right. That's happening. That's good, Manasseh. Yeah. Happening right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys have said a lot. I was going to say something, but I, it left me now. But everything you guys have said is great. Um, you know, I did this this morning when I when I sat, you know, to have some quiet time with the Lord. Uh, I started reading in the Old Testament, and a story came up that it actually it made me it made me cry when I read it. Um, and it was a sad story about uh, one of the. Kings, well, I don't know, he wasn't exactly a king. Well, they they called him a head over Gilead. But um, anyway, he had spoken some words out of his mouth, um, made a vow to God, and then he had to fulfill it, and it, had, it was a very sad outcome. And I started asking God, you know, why did you let this man make this vow, and then why did you let him fulfill it? And, um, you know, it's like... This man, his name was uh, Jephthah, J-E-P-H-T-A-H. But it was about his, um, his seeking to um, defeat the enemy that was coming after him. And he, he was, as, as a young child, his mother was a harlot. And so his, when the, his, um, his other brothers were born and he was you know, older, they kicked him out of the town. And so he was a valiant warrior, and he had other, it said, um, what was the word? It said, uh, well, he had some worthless fellows that followed him, is what it said. Mm -hmm. Worthless fellows, and they were like a marauding band, you know, but they were uh, fighters. And so the town where he came from, Gilead, when um, their enemies were coming after them, they went to this guy, uh, Jephthah, and, and said, come and be our leader, be the head over us, and come back home and and uh, defeat these people. And um, 
And he said, well, if God will deliver these, you know, people into my hand, then yeah, I'll do that. And he made this terrible vow that who, if, if, if God would deliver all these people that he would, anyway, I almost even don't want to talk about <laughs> how, um, it, but the thing about it is, is that what you guys were talking about here is that how we, we keep going and going and focusing in our life um, that, you know, we think that what we're doing is good and that it's going to get give us the, the outcome that we want. Um, you know, we, we could try so hard, so hard to get something done um, to prove a point to, you know, like this guy was doing. Uh, just wanting this victory so bad that not even thinking what you were sacrificing, what you're laying on the line um, by doing that. And really what we are doing is we're laying our lives on the line, our spirit, our soul, our peace, our who we are. You know, if we're just going to keep going and going and going and going and ignoring the our spirit, our soul is calling out and saying, you know, I need peace. I need to talk to God. I need to connect with love. God is love. You know, we're sacrificing this very beautiful life and time and relationship that we could have with God. It doesn't have to be the rush, 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 accomplish, accomplish, you know, do, do, do. There's, there's so much more greater uh, peace and strength and love and enjoyment in being quiet with the Lord. You like to meditate, so I know that you uh, understand what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well or not. Yeah. That is right. I just want to very add good. one line. Uh, how my dad puts it uh, uh, in his words is, you know, at the moment God is looking for a seeker uh, or a lover. You know, there are different types of worshippers, saints, servants, but God is not looking for that. He's looking for a lover, a seeker, who will seek for him, who will love him the way he loves us. Mm -hmm. You know, because that is missing. In worship thing, it is just like a formality. I mean, uh, the worshippers, I'm not talking like, uh, you know, even like that said. Uh, he's not saying that worshipping is bad. But... The love part is missing in every every part of the world. And that's what God is looking for at the moment, at this very moment. Yeah, it's a relationship. Yeah. And, you know, the scripture says that God does not take pleasure in our sacrifices, mm -hmm. in our working and working. He's looking for people who are looking for him. You know, he says, seek my face and not just my hand, not what I can give you, like for this guy, victory over the enemy, not just that. Yes, God wants to give you victory, but not at the expense of doing something, you know, making some terrible vow, you know, or, um, and feeling like you have to fulfill, you know, things that God's not asking you to fulfill. You know, God doesn't, you know, yes, he does. If your heart is right with him and you're spending time alone with him and you actually know God through your relationship with him, through you, you're going to know that he is not asking you to make these terrible sacrifices or um, do things to try to please him, to try to get his love, to try to earn his love, to try to make, you know, something successful. You're going to just know your love. There's something so empowering and mm -hmm. wonderful about that. I don't know that I can really explain. No. But um, That's let's all. go forward a little bit. Did you have something you want to say? Oh, I was just going to say that's right. It's not about doing uh, whatever whatever that doing is for you, but not doing it for some um, alternative reason or to get something in return. It's it's really being being moved very deeply um, from that place of love um, to just do. Um, doing it without seeking anything in return, really. Um, that's, if, if that is what we are all motivated by, 
Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a different place we'd be living in right now. I mean, we would never mm-hmm. have it on earth, you know, right now. You know, it's not about, you know, um, doing all these things for others, though it may look good, you know, from the outside. Um, it only really matters if that's, that's what you're motivated by. You know, if you're really, truly motivated by, that's all. That's all God wants. You know, so. Mm-hmm. so just uh, talking about the poem, let's give it a listen. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and give it a listen. I have searched for you this entire life, endlessly looking for you in countless eyes, listening intently for our secret language in all that is said and unsaid. touch, seeking some sign, some confirmation from you. Why is the search so long, the road to you so lonely? What have I done to deserve this? What do I need to do to find you, to see you? good I love the heartbeat you know sound in that it's really intense it goes perfectly along with the, the words you've written uh, um, who did the music to that uh, Darren Stark Jr. Who did that one yeah he's, he's always been my favorite musician to work with uh, um, hopefully we'll get to do some more work together in the future but a little break right now, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, it's really good. So thanks. the part, the second part that we heard there, um, it says, "Why is this search so long? The road to you so lonely. What have I done to deserve this? What do I need to to do to find you, to see you? Uh, you know, where do I look next? I mean that." That's just so true, you know, about what we were saying. You know, sometimes you're stopping in the middle of your tracks and you're like going, why am I doing all this? Um, What's the real purpose? What's the big picture? And God, where are you? Am I just totally missing you? Why didn't you just make it so easy to find you? You know, why couldn't you just draw a straight line and we just follow it? You know, something really, really plain and it's simple and easy to understand. But he doesn't do it that way. Yeah, it's, um, you know, every everyone's road, everyone's path and process is so unique. And, um, you know, I do believe that that's why we were all here to, to get back to that connection, to remember where we really came from, who, what we really are. Um, but our lessons are so unique in getting there. And uh, for some people, it's about relationships. For some people, it's about money. Um, you know, but it's all, you know, there are no accidents. I think we're, we're all here for a very specific purpose. And our way of getting there is, you know, there's as many 
different ways as there are as many different people. But we're all seeking that. Um, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> some people look to that connection through religion. And um, for me, it's never been about religion. Um, and I don't, I've never understood since I was young why religions all claim, uh, you know, to, uh, to have that connection or to be, to be God or look for God, look for peace, but they're at war most of the time. So <clears throat> something's missing there. <laughs> and, you know, in our religious, um, religious aspects, but, um, I think we're all truly seeking that same thing, and we're, we're looking for it outside of ourselves. And if we see ourselves already as that manifestation of the divine, of everything, and we learn to see that in the other person, you know, I see you already as a manifestation of God, of God itself, you know, the divine, of all it is, then um, there's nothing missing, you know, that's it. There is no more seeking, you know, it's already, I'm, I am that, I'm already here. So, um, when we seek outside of ourselves for that fulfillment, it's a very lonely road. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say, you yeah. going to say something? Uh, yeah, I was just uh, listening and uh, when the word religion comes, I just have to say something because you know, in India, we have lots of different kinds of beliefs. And I've been, you know, grown uh, among all these different people of different religions. So, uh, you know, I, I know what exactly you were trying to say. And uh, my dad was uh, also doing a study on uh, different religions, like, you know, what they say. And, and, you know, all is talking of the same direction, but still, why it looks or sounds confusing is because no one is, uh, or no other religion is talking purely about God, because all the religions in the world are made by humans. God mm -hmm. never made the religion. It's all like, you know, we made countries the same way we made religion. As per our own liking, as per our own requirements, as per our own comforts. You know, if uh, you know, people, if set of people say, "Oh no, I want to do this. I want to follow this kind of a tradition," for me, what we need as as for our comfort level, as for our own need, or maybe it is a business, because most of the time I see it as a business thing, which profits everyone, so even the country, the government. Yeah, I see that all the time. So. Uh, this one verse I would like to add there from Romans chapter 311, it says, No one has real understanding, no one is seeking God. So that is about religion, all religion, because, you know, no one has proper understanding. That's why uh, it is all so confusing, because they are not seeking God. They are just doing it as a formality or, or maybe they're just... Uh, Trying to focus on their own uh, needs or desires. Guilt. So, or, you know, like, yeah, that's what I, I uh, see in religion. Uh, because uh, whenever we go and buy something, or uh, not, not buy something, or whenever we are just looking for our own stuff, we want it like uh, if, if uh, it is not good for me or. Uh, for, um, no, 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 let it put it like this, if it's not suitable for people around us, or people will not like it, I should not buy it, mm. or like a show-off kind of a thing. Mm. So, because in India, I just uh, want to share here, like most of the people uh, in Christian community, mm -hmm. they do a lot of show-off. You know, if we are Christian, so we have to be in a standard uh, manner or in a standard position just to maintain that, uh, uh, you know, status or whatever. But, I mean, that is just a fooling around thing. Because, you know, uh, again, that purpose of choosing that religion is not getting fulfilled or what you're doing with that thing. I mean, you're not uh, uh, 
opting for a job in a Microsoft or a big company, you know, just to maintain a status that, you know, I work with Microsoft. It is not about your job, right? Like religion, if, even if you made a religion, it should not portray your personality in a society just to show up. And I, that's why I don't, I never supported any religion because religion has been uh, a man-made thing to me, which is not at all godly. Um, and whatever true word is there, uh, the Satan, I call evil or the bad thing, Satan, has mixed it with religion so uh, good in a good manner that people are still not uh, able to accept the truth. Because it is mixed and presented to people in uh, with religion, so that's why it gets very confusing. So I just see, uh, like as you say, you know, God is here, as you were just saying. You know, uh, He's not anywhere else. He's just here, right here. And uh, just one step we need to do when uh, you say in that prayer, you know, what do I uh, look next? Where, where do I look next? So uh, I just say through this scripture. That, uh, which is in Revelation 3.20, says, Look here, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear me calling and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal as friends. So, you know, he's just uh, here knocking at the door in our heart, in our spirit. We just have to open the door. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I may add something there, um, I wanted to say that um, right now, so so we we call ourselves followers of Jesus, not really, even though I'm the only one out of the group here that goes to church. Um, I do believe in um, being with people that help strengthen you, mm -hmm. or if you feel like God has put you somewhere, you know, he says, I want you to go here. If you feel that in yourself and you know that's true, then, then go. Um, and that's that's what I'm doing, but um, uh, yeah, I believe that God is omnipresent. He's God is everywhere. He's in all of us. Even in He gave us the breath of life. I mean, without Him, none of us would be alive. And um, it's just like uh, it comes back to what we were discussing earlier. In where are we seeking and where are we focusing? Um, you know, what is our our motive and um, kind of along that lines, I want to read um, out of Psalm 73, um, starting in verse 721. It says, when my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in my heart, I was stupid and ignorant. I was like a beast around God, around you. But nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and after you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none other, no, no thing upon this earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For as for me, it is good for me to be near my God. I have made the Lord my refuge, that I may tell of all thy works. Mm. And uh, that's kind of saying the same thing too. When when we're when we are out there just going after you know all of our accomplishments, desires, or whatever other motives, it's like our our we've turned away from God at that point. You know, let's just go this way. And but He pricks at our heart, and we know that He's always there with us. Um. So I want to go on to the next section here. It says, um, so afraid to stop seeking, time is running out, unwilling to settle for less than you. I know you're right there, just out of reach and right here, here, completely within my grasp. The road to you is through me, and so I continue on. But that first line there, so afraid to stop seeking you, that's been a huge uh, thought in my own life ever since I, as long as I can remember. You know, what do you have to say about that line, Diana? I think it goes back to me 
for um, again just feeling that uh, that I've been seeking my entire life like for that thing you know that connection that purpose and um, just feeling that I couldn't abandon that which you know but then also feeling like time is running out you know meaning and you know, my, my own physical life here you know like uh, getting older and you know, like, what is that am I going to know this connection am I going to know my true purpose you know before I go and um and also then that that love in a in a human sense you know having that that love that relationship that I feel like I've always been searching for too and I'm calling short of um so that's really what that that line or those lines are the more for me mm. that's that's um a little different from where I was you know thinking and but you know that well, happens, here that happens well, all the time really I'm getting a little warm in here um Okay, so it made me think of um, scripture, uh, which I didn't really have time to locate, but I can tell you basically what it says, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Jesus said it. it it's um, or it's in the New Testament at least, could be in the Old as well. Uh, that it's not what you're doing right now, and um, I'm sorry, it is what you're doing right now today. That matters. I mean, um, you know, as Christians or followers of Jesus, you know, like I said, we do believe that um, God is in all of us, and and that, but that when we actually acknowledge God, acknowledge our sin to Him through relationship with Him, it's not by some rules that some church has or religion has set out. It's through your own communication and relationship to God to say, God, you know, I know that I have sinned. I know I've done wrong. I, you know, I've been selfish. I've, I've been angry. I've said wrong things. I've, I've been jealous. You know, I've, you know, whatever it is um, that you've done wrong, you know, could be something small. It could be something huge. You know, I stole a pack of gum or I killed somebody, you know, could be anything. If you just go ahead and acknowledge that to God, that's between you and God, and say, you know, I know I don't know how to control myself. I don't know how to stop doing these bad things, how to stop getting angry. You know, I ask you to help me. And so, and, and we believe Jesus came and he sacrificed. He lived a perfect life and died in our place. So he... He took the punishment we deserve, and so he, um, his perfect sacrifice for us cleanses us when we accept him, and then we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin and come in our heart, and we feel him in here, and so we feel the adoption, we feel the presence of God inside of us, um, and have this personal relationship with Jesus and fill him with us all the time, and so... Um, so all of our sins and the bad that we've done in the past, it doesn't count anymore. It doesn't matter. It's not held against us. The slate mm -hmm. is wiped clean. Jesus wiped it clean by taking our place. So the same thing goes for, you know, what you did in the past that was good. You know, it doesn't count today. If you have stopped being good today, if you have decided that, I paid all my dues, and I've done everything I needed to do. Now I can just do whatever I want. That's that's evil. You have to continue, continue to do what's right. Um, and so to me, that's what I was thinking about. So afraid to stop seeking. To mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't ever want to stop doing what's right. I don't ever want to stop. Uh, seeking God, and I'm not talking about trying to earn my way into heaven, which some people interpret that way. No, I'm talking about I never want to stop seeking God's presence with me, even though I know He's here. You know, we're all human. We we come and go so much uh, 
in our daytime and um oh there was this there was a proverb I read this morning that made me think of that but I can't I can't think oh here it is it says Proverbs 14 1 today's the 14th so it's a perfect day to read Proverbs 14 it says wisdom builds her house but folly tears it down wisdom so wisdom builds her house you know and not just build it one time and let it go and say, oh, I built the house. I don't have to do anything else to it. No, you got to keep up maintenance on it, and you got to clean it. You got to keep the pests from coming in, and you know. So wisdom continues to do this on a daily basis to take care of things. So, um, well, that's that is where where that line kind of took me this morning. That's that, and that's great. Um, and that I think is the beauty of. Poetry mm -hmm. is, um, I mean, I've read some beautiful poetry, of course, we all have, and you have your own interpretation, you have how that piece and those words when you dissect them speak to you in any given moment mm -hmm. um, to the listener. And I often wonder um, when I read other people's poetry, like, oh, what, what state of mind was he or she in when they wrote that? Or, you know, you think it's a very depressing piece, and actually it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different objective ways to look at a, at a piece of poetry, and that's the beauty of it, I think, is that um, it really only matters how it speaks to you, so mm -hmm. what you get from it, I believe. Mm -hmm. I so, think it's but, great. But, and, you I, know, the, I... the fact that Anybody, I, I, for me personally, uh, listens to anything or reads anything that I've written and gets, you know, is touched by it or moved by it in some way, for me is uh, is a blessing in itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel the same way too. We, uh, Manasseh and I, just recently discovered some of our songs that we have closed for download. They're being live streamed or something on some other sites, you know, and you can download them there. So it's like, okay, just be happy somebody actually likes your music enough to want to play it somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, so um, I want to skip on down here. It says, you know, the road to you is through me, and so I continue on. Mm -hmm. So let's want to give us a little um well again we're at that at that time and um feeling that that connection to god and that connection to you know that great love um had not been found yet i mean i knew i was on the right path and uh it was getting closer but i knew that again it, it comes right back to here to me. And the only way that I was going to find that and to know that, to know those relationships was through me. Again, not seeking outside of myself. So um, it was just it was just that knowing that I still had more work to do. You know, that I am on the right path, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> and um, you know, just just get back to the, you know, more forgiveness of the past. You know, just it was a lot of inner work for me. You know, meditation, meditate and see what comes up during meditation and the messages that I get from the, from the divine during my meditations. And um, and meeting people, like you said, Carolyn, whether it's going to church or all the different events. You know, I do believe that we are right where we're supposed to be in any given moment because we're we're here. You know, we're there, we're here. Um, and just like breadcrumbs along the way. You know, one thing kinda of leads to another, or to a book or to a conversation. And, um, and those things are always um, affirmations for me that I'm on the right path. And so um, but again it's it's all about knowing that it's the road to that to God that you're seeking is always through yourself, through your, you know, your own heart, and um, 
Um, and that's the way it was for me. And that, that proved true. I wrote that poem, uh, I believe it was in May, and um, that September, a few months later, I was living it. So I wrote about it before things really happened, but that's where I was at at the time of writing it. So, um, well, it's a really great okay. life experience you've uh, written about and let us talk about today. Um, it's, it's really, really nice and uh, thought-provoking, all of the words you wrote that uh, you received in your meditation. And mm -hmm. um, well, we need to go ahead and move on a little more, and we're going to play the, um, the last clip that Manasse put together for you there. Thank you. This is love. To fly toward a sacred sky. To cause a hundred veils. To fall each moment. First, to let go of life. In the end, It is in the hour of the fulfillment of love between a man and a woman that the reckless affirmations of mutinous life may best be apprehended. It is then that the vain mind of man, confounded utterly by the roarings of desire, lies open at last to instruction from the senses, from those five unparagoned wits that have become in one snatched instant more piercingly sensible of God's true word. On a hillside somewhere in Sorrento Valley, my aunts and uncles sat in canvas chairs in the blazing sun, facing a small ash tree. There was no wind. In the distance, I could see some modern buildings hovering in the air above the wooded hillsides of Sorrento Valley. I followed the progress of a large bumblebee as the minister stood offering a prayer next to the young white California ash tree. Somewhere a singer went right on repeating, When I grow too old to dream. That was so good. I could just listen to that. All yeah, of it. I the guitar on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I should, you know, I, I actually spend more time in my vehicle. I, I should burn some CDs or something and, you know, listen to some things. But um, anybody who wants to hear your your really nice uh, sounds and your poems, they can go to soundcloud.com forward slash Diana dash Harmon dash Grenard. That is D-I-A-N-A dash H-A-R-M-O-N dash G-A-R-N-A-N-D. Garnand. Okay. Um, do you have any other websites? Um, I have another SoundCloud also, which is kind of a spillover um, called And Speaking of Love. Mm -hmm. um, some of those pieces that you played will also be found on that, on that site. Um, mm -hmm. But um, no, as far as, uh, well, you know, I, I've got a um, page up on, I think, vandalism and reverb nation, but again, most of what I have done is on okay. Well, you know, and I know you you did um, you worked with Coid Flello. Mm -hmm. um, you did all of those tracks for him. I, I've listened to all of those, and um, I I'm not sh you know that's about the time where I started um, noticing you, and that was uh, um, that was a a year ago. He was one of our first like three third or fourth interview. So I don't know if you've oh, seen, seen that. that. Yeah. No, yeah, but I, I would love to. 
He's he's an awesome that was a fellow. Real honor. He really is. Um, I I can't tell you the specific details on how we were drawn together. It was uh, divine guidance, no doubt. But even he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going dis to disclose that here. But I will say. Um, I was touched deeply when he asked me to uh, initially recite one and then two of his pieces. And then he told me that they came from a book that he put together and that he was having published. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Letters in Love was a whole section of that book. And I think there were over 70 pieces, 77 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, his writing and those letters were just, I'm, I'm such a romantic at heart that just went, boom, you know, yeah. right to me. And he asked me to read those. I, I couldn't believe it. And um, but sure enough, his, his uh, dream came to fruition. He put out his book. Right, I believe the book was already printed. He was putting out the CD. And so um, he was very kind and generous. He sent me a copy of his book and then he put out the CD with all of my recordings on it, and uh, uh, he he was just as grateful to me for doing that as I was to him. It was just really a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's a wonderful he's person. Uh -huh. Yeah, we special. really we really did enjoy talking with him. So yeah, you'll you'll really get a kick out of the interview when you get when you watch it. Well, so. Um, yeah, so Diana, we we got to close now. So is it okay if I say a prayer for you? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for keeping our internet connections going and watching mm -hmm. over us, even in our weaknesses, that you love us. God, you love us so much. You want all of us to know how much you love us. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed Diana with not only the words, but the love that comes through them. That helps people to slow down and to think about you, to think about what's important, to hopefully to communicate with you and to walk in love in this life. And Lord, I just ask and pray that you watch over Diana and her family, all of those she loves. I pray for you to continue um, to bring her all of the desires um, of her heart that are, are good, Lord, to come to fruition, that um, you will continue to bless her jobs, her financial stability, her love, her relationships, and this ministry that she has with her words, the words that you give her, and everything else. Lord, I thank you so much. I ask you to keep them all safe, and all of us who hear and listen and draw us all to you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. That thank was you. Beautiful. Thank you, Diana. So we're going to say bye now, and thanks so much for coming. Thank you again for inviting me. What a, a beautiful surprise it was. Uh, uh, I appreciate that, Carolyn and Manasa. Jonathan, thank you all very much. Thank you, too. Thank you so much for coming, too. Okay. Oh. <laughs>